recall the informal definition of the limit of f of x as x approaches a. As x gets closer and closer to a, f of x should get closer and closer to l. Let's see if we can make the definition a little bit more precise. To do that, let's start um, with an interval of values around l. So uh, let's say that l is at the center of this interval, and the distance from the center, l, to the upper bound or the lower bound on that interval is epsilon. So that the upper bound, the height of that parenthesis would be at l plus epsilon. The height of the lower bound is at l minus epsilon. OK, as x gets closer and closer to a, f of x should get closer and closer to l. Well, here's how we can define how close we need to be to a to get within, uh, say, epsilon of l. Um, all we have to do is create an epsilon band around l. So what do I mean by that? Well, go out horizontally from the lower bound height till you intersect the function, and then go out horizontally from the upper bound height until you intersect the function. And then go down vertically from those intersection values. And, and look at the shorter distance between where the, the vertical lines in green uh, intersect the x-axis and a. The shorter distance would, at least the way I've drawn it here, it looks like the shorter distance would be this distance. And let's call that distance delta. So let's call that delta. And so the idea then is if you create a corresponding interval that has a radius of length delta, so that I'm going to say that that distance is also delta, so that this endpoint is a plus delta, and this endpoint is at a minus delta. And, and then the idea is if you pick an x value, in this interval, say here, then certainly f of x will be within epsilon of l. So now that we've grabbed hold of, of some actual values, uh, the epsilon, the delta, the a, the l, we can make this definition uh, this calc 1 definition of limit much more precise. That picture leads to the epsilon delta definition of limit from calculus 1. Okay, assumptions. Uh, let's assume y equals f of x is defined on uh, an interval i, an open interval i, Say it has endpoints x1 and x2, for instance. So, okay, I'll say um, i is uh, an open interval containing a. So y equals f of x is defined on i, an open interval containing a. Um, now, y equals f of x may not be defined at a itself. So we'll say, except possibly except possibly at x equals a. y equals f of x is defined on i except possibly at a. OK. So here's the definition. We'll say this, the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l if for all epsilon greater than zero there is a delta greater than zero such that so delta is a number, epsilon is a number delta greater than zero such that the distance between f of x and l, we could write that as the absolute value of fx minus l, is less than epsilon whenever the distance between 
x and a, we could write that as the absolute value of x minus a, whenever that distance is less than delta. Uh, but not equal to zero, so we'll say greater than um, zero. So uh, the, the distance x minus a is, is going to be bigger than zero. It's in between zero and delta, let's say. So this is just a, a formal way of saying what the picture that we just got done talking about says. You give me an epsilon, then there is a delta such that we can get the distance between f of x and l less than epsilon as long as x is within delta of a but not equal to a itself. As long as all that's true, then this limit is going to exist. And again, that's just a formal way of saying, hey, the closer x gets to a, at least eventually, the closer x gets to a, eventually, the closer f of x gets to l. 